This is a really brief intro to Bubblesort, and a couple of the resources I used to learn a little bit about Bubblesort were a front-end master's course called Four Semesters of Computer Science in Five Hours and Harvard CS50 course. So the front-end master's course um, is a subscription-based website. It's about $40 a month. This is Brian Holt's course, which goes over algorithms and data structures. Um, but you aren't just paying the $40 for this one course. There's actually a ton of different courses on frontendmasters.com, as well as live courses, which is really cool. So you can interact with the instructor and ask questions. And Harvard CS50, of course, is just free on YouTube. So those are a couple of the resources I used. Let's get to bubble sort. So bubble sort is a simple sorting algorithm. And you might be wondering, why do we need sorting algorithms? Well, when you have a ton of data, um, one of the main things algorithms need to do is sort all of that data into the proper order. And so that's what sorting algorithms do. And there's a couple of different sorting algorithms. Now, bubble sort is a sorting algorithm, but it's actually not that useful. That's something that Brian Holt touches on in his course that I talked about earlier and something I've heard in a couple of other places too, bubble sort is not very useful. Um, and by that, I mean, it's not an efficient algorithm. It's kind of a slow algorithm. And because of that, you are often not going to use it. So you might be wondering, why am I even learning about this? Well, Brian Holtz and a couple of other instructors that I've, that I've seen talk about how bubble sort is a really good sorting algorithm to start on when learning about sorting algorithms. But um, just a disclaimer there, you might not necessarily be using bubble sort and actually implementing it. So I'm not going to show you an implementation of bubble sort. I'm just going to show you kind of a basic idea of really how it works and how I wrap my mind around it. So bubble sort is just going through and comparing two numbers at a time, and it's switching these numbers if they are not in the proper order. So here, let's just get rid of this, we have a list or an array of 1, 5, 2, and 9. So bubble sort is going to go in, it's going to skip 1 because it has nothing to compare 1 to, and go immediately over to 5, and it's going to compare 5 with this left number 1 and say, okay, is 5 greater than? or less than one. Five is greater than one, so it's not going to switch those numbers. It's going to stay. Then the bubble sort algorithm is going to go over to two and say, okay, is two greater than or less than this number on the left, which is five. Two is less than five, so these numbers are going to swap. So now we'll have one, two, five, and nine. And then again, bubble sort is going to Go over to 9 and say, okay, is, is 9 greater than or less than 5? And because 9 is greater than 5, those are not going to swap and they're going to stay. However, if 9 would have been something else, of course, like a 4, then these two numbers would have swapped into proper order and you would have gotten 1, 2, 4, and 5. You might wonder, why is it called bubble sort? And you can go see on this Medium publication called The Hacker Noon a good visualization of it. So someone wrote this article, and you can go down here and see this. So this is basically a visual of what Bubble Sword is doing. It is going through, and the number that is bigger, it's going to the end. So you see the 6 and 3, the 3 is smaller, and the 6 gets pushed over there, or bubbles over down to the end of the list. So the idea is the bigger number bubbles to the top, and that's why it's called the bubble sort algorithm. Back to our slides. So I was wondering, what is bubble sort's big O notation? And I first quickly went over to bigocheatsheet.com, which really just shows you a good place to quickly look at the time complexity or a space complexity of an algorithm. And we can go back down, search bubble sort, and see that it's um, big O notation or its time complexity is O of n squared. And O of n squared, like I have touched on a little bit before, is inefficient. And so that's why we don't use bubble sort because it's an inefficient algorithm. It's a slow algorithm. And if you remember, I think I touched on this, um, big O of n squared basically means that for this bubble sort, there is one loop that is going through all the numbers each time and another loop that is going through each number 
and swapping them. And so that is why it is n squared and slow. That's really the general idea of bubble sort. Let me know if you have any feedback. And these slides for this video are at slides.com slash Madison Cannon.